There's been a stunning discovery made in an English quarry with experts uncovering a trail of dinosaur footprints while carrying out excavation work in the area. Dubbed the Jurassic Superhighway, the tracks are believed to be 166 million years old and are helping scientists to understand more about prehistoric life on Earth. Let's get more on this exciting find from Adele Pentland, who is a paleontologist at Curtin University. Now, Adele, what exactly have paleontologists found in this Oxfordshire quarry? Yes, yeah, so at this limestone quarry, paleontologists and teams of students volunteering, more than 100 or so students, have uncovered a stunning set of dinosaur trackways. Uh, at the moment, the largest trackway is 220 metres, making it one of the largest mapped accumulations of dinosaur footprints anywhere in the world. How did they discover it? I mean, we're looking at Im images here where they're blowing apart parts of the quarry. How do they do that without damaging those footprints? How did they know they were there? And what work has been undertaken to, to slowly uncover them? Yeah, so the first footprints were identified in 2022 by one of the quarry operators, Gary Johnson. He was quick to identify a depression as he was removing layers of rock. And they noticed the pattern as well that they seem to continue one after the other. And it was from there that they got in contact with paleontologists from the Oxford University Museum of Natural History and uncovered and confirmed that these were in fact dinosaur footprints. What does this discovery tell us about the dinosaur that left the footprints 166 million years ago? So most of the footprints appear to be from a long neck dinosaur or a sauropod, something similar to Cetiosaurus, which was first named by Sir Richard Owen many years ago. But what's interesting about these footprints is that these are made by large animals that weighed approximately 10 tons, were approximately 11 meters or so long. Uh, however, these are preserved in limestone and they're there are also remains of sea urchins at the site. So England was very different at this point in Earth history. 166 million years ago, uh, England was a series of archipelagos in a warm environment, but it appears that these dinosaurs were walking along a mudflat uh, where you have marine animals as well. So does this uh, discovery reveal anything we didn't previously know about dinosaurs or the environment that they lived in at that time? It's unusual to find something at this scale in England in particular. And an incredible thing about dinosaur footprints is that it reveals behaviour, which bones don't typically reveal. So by studying this, scientists have a better chance of understanding what the entire ecosystem was like, not just the dinosaurs that were present in this environment. And how have the footprints, um, estimated to be 166 million years old, been preserved? Yeah, so they're preserved in limestone. Uh, importantly, that layer that was once on top of those footprints seems to be separating away quite nicely from the footprints. Uh, but most of the excavations are being undertaken with hand tools, so uh, geopics, um, trowels that you would also see at archaeological sites and things like that. And is it a really significant find? How does it compare to other discoveries of dinosaur tracks, for example, ones that we've had here in Australia? Here in Australia, we have found dinosaur trackways before. Uh, Broome in Western Australia is uh, one of the more famous track sites. And a few years ago, the Snake Creek track site in Winton was also identified. And there's the famous Lark Quarry track site as well. Um, it is unusual to find a trackway in which you can track one individual and uh, map out its left and right foot one after the other. Having that amount of information allows you to provide an estimate for the height of that dinosaur and also its walking pace. So in the case of the UK site, it seems that these dinosaurs were walking about as quickly as a fast walking human, about six or eight kilometres per hour. I'm just amazed at how scientists can work these things out. In June, a research team at your university revealed uh, what a 95 million year old sauropod ate for its last meal. How do you determine something like that? 
Yeah, so that research was led by my PhD supervisor, Dr. Stephen Porapat, also with the Western Australian Organic and Isotope Geochemistry Centre at Curtin University. Uh, what we identified at that dig site were what looked like raspberry-like structures. So with those gut contents, we also had skin preserved as well, but high-powered x-rays, uh, institutions like uh, ANSTO, the Australian Synchrotron, are allowing us to be able to verify that these are indeed gut contents without destroying the fossils in the process. And you believe that this latest discovery in the UK feels very much like the tip of the iceberg. In what way? Yeah, so uh, the scientists involved with that and there are several different organisations that are involved with this because, again, it is a very large area. Uh, there haven't been any preliminary uh, research that have been published, but very much looking forward to seeing what those teams uh, report in the near future. Adele Pentland, really good to uh, get your thoughts on this. It's fascinating indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.